question is going to be just tell me about Nico Sports and um, just so people have a high level, and then we'll get into um, the, the the big idea. Absolutely, so we'll get going here. All right, um, Todd, welcome to the show. Tell me about Nico Sports. And so we are a um, memorabilia company. Our what we do that's different from the rest of the industry is we sell exclusive limited edition memorabilia that commemorates, celebrates sports' biggest moments. For instance, Super Bowl, or just the CFP that just happened, National Championship. We have a football that's fully licensed, um, limited edition of 5,000. That's better than any other inflatable on the market. And that's uh, fully licensed from the NCAA, the Georgia, University of Georgia. And on top of that, we also have, um, you know, we layer that with autograph opportunities, um, NIL deals. And it's something that somewhat you can, you know, it lasts a lifetime. It's, it's on memory that we sell memories that of sports greatest moments. So you've been there for a couple of years. Give me... Um... Let's start off with one big insight that you've had that's worked to to drive growth at this brand. Absolutely, um, seg list building and segmenting lists, or in, in collecting as much customer data as possible, has been a really big growth tool for me. Um, previously, there really was no strategy or roadmap in place, so coming in here and being able to quickly and efficiently segment and build lists that are relative to the audience that we are targeting. Like I said, we don't want to send somebody uh, from Alabama, uh, you know, a, an email or, you know, a text message that is from meant for Georgia people. So really tailoring our list and segmenting our list and new data that we bring on, making sure it's in the right place. So it's um, put out to the customer and the, the audience and the fan at the right, right time. And, making sure it's the right right piece of merchandise. Yeah, so personalization, I can see uh, that would be a really big thing because people want to see their team and not another team. Um, and the, the difference in conversion between sending someone a sports memorabilia item that means a lot to them versus something that means nothing to them is the difference between a sale or not a sale so it's super important how are you actually doing that can you get into the detail yeah. um, whether it's software that you're using or certain types of spreadsheets how are you modeling this all out absolutely so i uh implemented clavio which i find to be one of the best uh tools on the market for quickly uh bringing in data past customer data and segmenting list based on a number of different uh, past purchasing history view products all kinds of different information Clavio could do very quickly and build out those lists and put those into different uh, funnels and flows. So that's one piece of technology that I, I highly recommend, uh, having used the MailChimps and other ESP, ESPs that don't have the sophistication and the convenience of, and use that Clavio has. So that's been a huge piece growing or doubling our rev our email marketing revenue um from 10 percent total revenue to 20 percent of revenue in the wow. past uh t 24 months yeah i've i've heard great things about clavio and how it's i mean it seems to me like they're kind of the market leader um on the email side because you've used a bunch of others can you give me what what's what's sort of the biggest difference that you've seen uh in 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 that software versus so, some others you've used Absolutely. It's, it's the simple, it's the, the, you know, user experience. It's being able to quickly create lists based off uh, cus customer properties, um, actions that customers previously taken or are currently taking by getting new leads. Let's say like viewed product. If I have somebody who I know has viewed a Georgia product two or three times or, or even start at checkout once but haven't completed the purchase, I can have funnels and flows set up to automatically retarget those customers through email or SMS. Also, I can integrate that with Facebook and send re do retargeting ads that way. Um, so that's one big factor. That's a big difference between other other ESPs that I've used before compared to what Clavio can provide. Also, the browse abandonment part is a big, uh, you know, like I, I talked about view product, but browse abandonment is a big thing that I'm not sure many 
other ESPs have the ability or have implemented that, where that's really a higher up in the funnel. You know, they haven't taken action of add to cart or start a checkout yet, but they've showed interest in a specific product. Browse abandon. I've actually never even heard that term. I've heard cart abandonment, but browse right. abandonment is when they're window shopping online exactly. and then they just leave. Exactly. So we're able to capture that information, put them into a list, and slowly start targeting them with relevant messages. That's amazing. And they don't need to self-identify. That's based on IP or cookies or some other um, form of, of ID, right? Exactly. As long as they have signed up through one of our forms or we've had them in our, in our database previously, we have that information. We do use a third-party uh, tool called um, Ad Shopper, um, which identifies people who are unidentified to us and is able to um, target them kind of the same way but that we're, we're not privileged to that information unless they actually make a purchase. That's that's so cool. Can you give an example, maybe a recent example of an email that went out that did really well, you know, had good copy, had good targeting, uh, just so people can kind of uh, can contextualize it? Yeah, absolutely. So last year, our Georgia, as soon as Georgia won, we were, we're, ready, to we're ready to go to market and with our exclusive football, limited edition of 5,000, born boss, um last year's uh email was sent to roughly probably twelve thousand people this year was about 18 to 20 and last year's let's say did about twenty five thousand revenue this year's did just on the email side did over seventy seven thousand wow. revenue but we layered sms on top of that which is something new that we've we've been collecting phone numbers the past eight to nine months and our SMS had a, our open rate, I'm looking at it right now, was our click rate on that was 33.2%. Wow. An additional $9,035 in revenue and 45 sales. And that was only on 500 phone numbers. Wow. There's there's no other business where you can turn emails and phone numbers into cash like, like e-commerce when, yeah. when you know how to do it. And that was within probably 12 hours or less. Yeah. So close to almost 100,000. Amazing. Um, okay, that's so cool. I know you got one more. Uh, another big thing you've done since uh, joining Nico Sports. Yeah, so our, our social media manager and team, you know, we put, when I came in to Nico two and a half years ago, um, influencer marketing and building partnerships was a huge part of it. Um, and last year, um, our return on, on investment through our partners and influencers, it's crazy. I just did the numbers on it. It's, it's about 1,500%. So yeah. how are you even measuring that? How, how, how are you attributing the, those sales? All right. So we have, so every partner that we, that we work with gets their own, um, own link. And so we can obviously count how many sales that they're acquiring um, directly to each each influencer. So that's how like, we're able to track it, and they can also track it themselves too. But we trade, you know, we trade value. We try to, you know, just like what, you know what you're trying to do with influencers is leverage their audience for yours. But we try to take it a step further. And since it's sports, they're super, you know, you know, we try to partner with. They have, you know crazy fans that are really loyal and if we can hook up with the right writer which we have and the right message board which is you know that's what i used to use the 2003 message boards i thought they kind of went away but now they're still kicking they're big and, yeah and if we can get in the right message board for them um things can really pop off and you know we spent about ten thousand dollars total in the past 12 months and have returned over i think it's Hundred seventy thousand, spending ten thousand dollars total. Total, so mostly wow. just we're number trading. We're giving them football. So some are, some have goals to hit. Like okay, if you sell five, you get a free football. If it's if they have a really big engaged audience, we'll give them some up, up front and an autograph. We'll get you an autograph ball too on top of that. And, That's amazing. How, know, how many? Can you, uh, can you give us just a sense of numbers? How many influencers are you working with? For Georgia specifically, we're working with about 
10. Um, okay. So we're hitting a lot of singles and doubles. Um, and that's kind of the goal is to hit as many singles, doubles. Hopefully we get a triple. Maybe we get a home run out of that. So, you know, out of that we did get a, I would say, last year we got a home run. This year we got a couple triples, a few doubles, and probably about more singles than anything. But all that adds up to big ROI. Absolutely. I mean, 1500% is a big number. And have you thought about, so you've got the influencer affiliate stuff going on and mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not even affiliate for money. It's affiliate for merchandise, which is even right. better. Have you thought about doing sort of the mega influencer uh, tr trying to go big or is, or do you want to really stick with the micros? Uh, so, right. So that that's just in my calculation, I just don't like doing one-offs. You know, I'm not sure we've, Obviously, we've talked to a lot of different athletes who have huge followings. You know, they want big money, you know, five, ten thousand dollars for one post. I really think, you know, that's just too, too big a risk right now that I'm willing to take, given uh, the budget and the growth we've seen working with micro influencers, people with, you know, have really loyal fans and really trust their their opinion. So that that's that's my philosophy right now. I, I I wouldn't rule it out in the future, but you know, I think doing it the way that we have been doing it has been successful. And doing a one-off, you know, two-off, depending on your budget size, and you just don't know what the return is going to be. It's kind of a big risk to putting all your money in one basket. Absolutely. Well, it's been working for you. So yeah. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. Uh, that's awesome. Well, Todd, thank you so much for joining today. This was uh, e-commerce gold. People are going to learn a lot and uh, really appreciate your time. Hey, thanks for having me and uh, glad, to, glad I was able to, talk, to connect. You got it. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll stop recording there. I, I, have, I was going to say something.